Kesaksian seorang Muslim bertobat terima Yesus menjadi Tuhan dan Juru Selamat di negara Mesir. Seorang yang belajar hukum berpendidikan tinggi bukannya menjadi hakim negara tetapi menjadi pengikut Yesus. Negara Mesir menganut hukum syariah sebagai konstitusi. Seorang bernama Majid El Safi Muslim Mesir dari lahir menerima Yesus sebagai Tuhan dan Mesias. Sebuah kesaksian yang luar biasa sekaligus menggemaskan. Walaupun terjadi sukacita di sorga, tetapi siksaan demi siksaan dilakukan oleh polisi syariah dialami oleh Majed. Tuhan Yesus menolong. Pertobatan ini seperti nubuat Alkitab ini. Lukas 15 ayat 7 Aku berkata kepadamu, demikian juga akan ada sukacita di sorga karena satu orang berdosa yang bertobat. Lebih daripada sukacita karena 99 orang benar yang tidak memerlukan pertobatan. Matius 24 ayat 9 Pada waktu itu kamu akan diserahkan supaya disiksa dan kamu akan dibunuh dan akan dibenci semua bangsa oleh karena namaku. Yeheskiel 18 ayat 21 Tetapi jikalau orang fasik bertobat dari segala dosa yang dilakukannya dan berpegang pada segala ketetapanku serta melakukan keadilan dan kebenaran ia pasti hidup ia tidak akan mati. Selamat datang di channel Sola Scriptura, channelnya kesaksian Kristen luar biasa. Jangan lupa subscribe, like, komen, dan share. Tuhan Yesus memberkati. Amin. Hello, Sid Roth here with Majid El Shafi. What happens when an Egyptian Muslim finds out that Jesus is the Messiah? The religious police put him in interrogation and try to kill him. His family disowns him. Other Muslims want to kill him. It's not an easy thing. Majid, you come from a family of attorneys, a Supreme Court justice, um, and you were studying law yourself. How in the world did you make this jump from being a Muslim and uh, you probably had a terrific future assured with uh, this whole legal family and everything. How did you even begin to think about Jesus in the Bible? It started after I finished my high school uh, back in Egypt and I started to study law in Alexandria to become a lawyer. And in the first year in Alexandria school, I discovered that there is between six to seven thousand Christians, Egyptians, they, they are in jail, six to seven, six thousand to seven thousand, and they are in jail for no reason, just because they are Christians, no, there is no another reason. There is something in the Egyptian law, it's called Al-Khat Al-Hamayuni law, it's a law that you cannot build churches, you can build bar, discotheque, but, but not but churches. They, but, but they have churches in Egypt. And old ones, not new ones. I see. And actually by this law that you cannot rebuild or build the old, the old ones. So basically what's happened that mm -hmm. you leave the old ones until it's collapsed on itself. So all of this show me that there is something wrong, there is persecution. So you're worried about this problem, how did you then make the leap? to believing in Jesus. I start to research why there is persecution. From my knowledge, when there is a persecution, that means that the enemy tried to hide something, that somebody tried to hide, why mm -hmm. you persecute some people, you know? Well, you have a real legal mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I went to my best friend, my best friend, his name is Tamir. Tamir was Christian, I was Muslim. And I told him, Tamir, why there is persecution happening to the Christians? And Tamir told me, listen, if I answered you, my answer can affect our friendship together. But I will give you a book. In this book, you will find answer for every question that you have. My first time I opened this book, it was a book about justice and, and, and love and forgiveness, more than about law. It's called the Holy Bible. Hmm. And first time I opened the Holy Bible was chapter John 8. And in John 8, they bring a lady commit adultery, throw her in front of the Lord, told him, yes. judge her according to the law of Moses. He started to write down on the sand by his finger, they repeated the question again. The Lord looked at all of them, told them, who without sin cast her the first stone? And the only one who can cast the first stone was the, was the Lord himself, Jesus, because he is the only one having no sin. But he didn't. He, the, she, they left. He looked at the lady, told her, go sin no more, I forgive you. And this was my first time I see true forgiveness. True forgiveness. I, I started to read the Quran, I started to read the, the Bible, I started to compare between both of them. 
in the end, after almost a year, I went to my friend Tamer and I told him, Tamer, I want, I know now what is Christianity. Christianity is not about religion. Christianity is not about uh, going to the church every Sunday, hallelujah, bless the Lord and see the Lord next Sunday. Christianity is about a relationship with God. I accept the Lord and I want to receive Jesus. But you have to count the cost. How could you do that? Your heritage, your family, your no, career. Nothing of that equal anything. If you, are, if you know that your soul in the end will end in, in, in hell. Okay, you started an organization to help the Christians in prison and the rights for Christians. Yes. And how large did the organization become in Egypt? Well, we started by seven members and after that we ended in two years, 24,000. 24,000? In one Okay, in one then he writes a book about what he believes and uh, he gets arrested. What happened when you got arrested? August 15, 1998. 1.30 in the morning, I heard knock on my door. I went to open the door, an officer asked for a name. I told him, a gentleman asked for a name. I told him nobody here by this name. Two minutes later, five officer, uh, five soldiers, two officers, they came, they broke the door, they took me from inside. They put me in the police station, it's called the Zogli police station, it's behind the Egyptian parliament. They told me, we know who you are, we know about the book that you wrote, the organization that you built. One thing we don't know, that who is the rest of your group? I told them, I don't know which group, I don't know which organization, and if you know everything about me, why are you asking me? <laughs> They told me, you want to play tough, we can play tough together. I told them, tough is my middle name, you have no idea. <laughs> they took me next day to Abu Zab al-Jal. Abu Zab al-Jal known in the Middle East to hell on earth. Mm. And Abu Zab al-Jal, let me just tell you a few information about the persecution system in the Middle East. As the people listening to us now, they have no knowledge about what's happening. And um, they, uh, first, they change your name in the official paper. So if your family or any human rights organization ask about you, you are not exist. Really? Uh, in the official papers. Uh, the officers that they are touching you, they're always wearing masks. You cannot see their faces. They're all, you, they always call each other by numbers, not by names. And every day is with different level of torture. So if you stay, day number one, they take the, this level of torture. If you didn't speak, they take you to higher level. I spent there seven days. For me, like 700 years. Hold that thought. They end up crucifying him. I'm not kidding. Don't go away. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Majid El Shafi. Now, Majid, you said they arrested you because you're living in Egypt, uh, you are a Muslim, you're a law student, you start an organization for uh, Egyptians that believe in Jesus, there, there's all sorts of persecution going on, you write a book, they haul you in, they want the names of the other Christians associated with you, you refuse to tell them, and then did you know that the torture would be as bad as it was, or did you not know this? Christians is like bag of tea. You don't know how strong they are until you throw them in hot water. So I didn't know, but I expected something like that. Okay, each day they got progressively worse. And is it true that they told you what they were going to do the next day so you would think about it? Yeah, yeah, basically. It's so a mental thing as well as physical. It's, it's a mental warfare, of course. Day number one, uh, they shaved the hair of my head. They put my head in cold and hot water. Uh, when I say cold water, it's a frozen water only. And when I say hot water, there is smoke coming out of it. And they put your head one minute here, one minute there. After that, they took me back to my cell. They told me, you tell us the name of your friends. I told them, to be honest with you, I didn't take shower for a long time and I enjoyed the cold and hot water. You got chutzpah, that's a uh, yeah, word, yeah. nerve. <laughs> and uh, and, and I'm, I look handsome without hair. And seriously, <laughs> if you see, I kept the style a little bit. Um, the more that you smile, the more that you show them no fear, they lose their control. Day number two, they carry me, they, they, they put me upside down, half of my, my, my body was on the ground, the another half was hanging. They burned me by uh, three cigarettes, they uh, slashed my back. Um, they beat me by every way possible. In the day number two, uh, the only thing that I can really remember in day number two was the taste and the smell of my blood. They took me back to my cell. They told me, tell us the name of your friends. I told them, no. And they told me, do you know what will be your punishment when tomorrow, if you didn't tell us, you're tortured tomorrow? I told them, no. They told me that we release three dogs to attack you. The three dogs trained to attack human beings, to, to eat flesh. And they closed the door. 
if you are in my place, what do you do? Okay. And um, so they, they open the door. Day number three, if you are in my place, what do you do? I just pray to the Lord and I tell him, Lord, just take me home. Basically, just, you know, kill me before tomorrow morning. I, that that, that um, would have to be a horrible death to have these uh, attack dogs. And I was scared because I was afraid that under heavy torture, I can mention the name of my friends. I'm yes. still flesh and blood. Day number three, they open the door. My cell is dark. The, the corridor, the light in the corridor is red light. They open the door. You can see the shadow. The three dogs getting closer and closer. And you can hear their noise, their voice, the, the, the feet. And, and I went and I sat down and in the corner. And I waited for pain and agony. And I covered my face by my own hand. And the dogs get closer and closer and closer. And suddenly, I couldn't hear the noise. I couldn't hear the, their voices. I took my hand away from my face to see what's happened. The three dogs sitting around me, none of them attacked. Soldiers and officers start to kick the dogs to attack. Yes, of course. You see, these dogs train to listen to their master, mm -hmm. but there is no higher master than Jesus Christ. <laughs> Long story short. They took the three set of the, they took the, the set of the three dogs, and I can hear the soldiers telling them maybe they're sick, bring me another set of three dogs. They bring another set of three dogs, another set of the three dogs sit in the same position. But the middle one took a step forward, and he licked my face. Well, what did the guards think about that? The guards didn't know what's happened. They took the three dogs, they closed the door. They, all of them, they were talking about miracle. They didn't know what is miracle. And, uh, but they were talking about what is miracle. And day number four, officer number 27, big, huge man, strong man, he came, he opened the door. He told me, listen, I'm not afraid from you. I told him, I know that you're not afraid from me. I'm the one who's supposed to be afraid from you. You're the one who's torturing me. <laughs> right. Do you have chutzpah? <laughs> he told me, listen, I'm here to make with you a deal. I told him, I'm listening. He told me, you tell me the name of your friends. I will release you. Whatever you like, I will give you. You want a big house? I give you a big house. You want a brand new car? I give you a brand new car. You want beautiful ladies? I give you beautiful ladies. Whatever you want, I give you. I told him, I like it. I will take the deal. But first, I didn't eat for three days. Go bring me food, and after that, we'll talk together. He told me whatever you like to eat. I told him shish kebab. And uh, trust me, shish kebab is much better than McDonald's. But anyway, so he went, he went to bring the best shish kebab. I sat down and ate. He told me, now you tell me the, the, the guys who work with you. I told him, listen, our group is a big, huge group. Of course. I cannot give you all their names. I cannot remember all of them. But I will give you the name of our leader. You can catch him. And he can tell you exactly the, the rest of our groups. He told me the leader, I thought that you are the leader. I told him, no sir, I'm just a servant. He told me, okay, give me the name of your leader. I told him the name of our leader, Jesus Christ. If you can catch him, catch him. Oh my goodness. Now, he didn't react too well to that. No, he didn't like what it. What did really. he do? Well, officer number 27, he punished me two punishment. The first punishment that he slapped my face. And he was a strong, big man. Uh, I hit the wall. Officer number 27 didn't know that later on, I would be in your show making fun about it. He didn't know that. Hmm. He thought that he broke my spirit, but he was wrong. Um, later on, they took me. The, my second punishment is the reason that I don't sleep in the night. Until now, I have what nightmares. Happened? They took me to another dark room, and they have a piece of wood, a cross shade. They took off my clothes, and they crucified me for two days and a half. Not nailed. Not you nailed. They tied, tied. Your hand, you tied your hand, your neck, your waist, your arms, your feet, your legs. And in the end of the two days and a half, they bring an Egyptian knife, it's called mango, and they make cut to the back of my left shoulder, and they put lemon and salt on the open wounds. How much can one human take? Um, one human with God or without God, that's the question. <laughs> I'll tell you what, hold that thought, we'll be right back, because they could not break him. And what do you think about these attack dogs not attacking him? Sounds like Daniel in the lines then. Be right back after this break. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid. I'm off here with Majid, and I don't know about you, but how can a human take what he went through? So they, they did succeed. They didn't break him, but they sure broke his body. And they, they, they take him to a hospital, if you could call it such a thing as a hospital. Uh, and he is so thirsty. Uh, they don't expect him to ever walk out of that hospital alive. He's so thirsty. What happened, Majid? And uh, I slept thirsty in this night, and the Lord came to me in vision, and he gave me water in his hand. And he told me, if you drink my water, why do you need any another water? And um, 
from the, I drink from the river basically of his hand and um, and next day I was start to move my hands and a week later I start to move my arms I start to move my body and I was healed completely to the picture that he's